one thing is for certain. Just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's working right now. So the big question is this, where can you learn what is working right now? The strategies, the tactics, the psychology, and the exact how to, how to grow your business, how to blow up your personal brand and supercharge your personal growth. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Sharon Srivatsa and welcome to Business School. A lot of people don't realize that uh, having somebody actually keep an eye on the money <laughs> yeah. is a really powerful thing in our business. And I know it because you and I got a chance to work together. You were the CFO of our company. So I was like, okay, she's got it, which is, which is awesome. It goes, it allows other people to do their jobs really well. So right now in what you do, you get a chance to work with so many entrepreneurs, different business right. sizes. Right. Um, where did kind of your fascination for kind of holding on to this, the foundation of the economics come into play? You know, I think it really comes down to the connection you make with the owners, right? So, you know, you, yeah, you, you have skills and you're, you're trained to do a certain job and you get a result from it. But once we kind of started working with entrepreneurs and what they were doing and being able to really kind of help them reach their goals, like putting something tangible, it's not like, you know, working for these cor big corporations, which we used to, right? You know, you, there's the big numbers and they go up the chain and they're looking at boards, looking at it and all this good stuff. But when you're actually, it's just someone's life and blood, sweat and tears. And they're like, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to grow to. Like that is way more impactful. It becomes somewhat personal, right? You care about their growth and care about where they want to take their company. Yeah. You know, so, so, you know, what's fascinating to me is entrepreneurs have this amazing capability yeah. of, um, of doing whatever it takes to not look at the money. Yes. Yes. Just like to them, it's like, Hey, I've got those metrics on a dashboard. If I just grow more, right. everything will be okay. And they yeah. don't real. And, and so I know you see this often where they say, right. well, we'll just, we'll just make more. We'll just sell more. Yes. We'll yes. Um, is that a, is that something that you see across the board? Uh, and how do you, when you talk to a entrepreneur, what do you, how do you talk about that? It, it's, they're scared, you know, they're, they're scared to kind of look at the numbers. It's, it's not fun sometimes. Um, we, we have, we have the spectrum. We've had the entrepreneur that's like, it's okay. I'm just going to sell more. I'm going to sell more. It's going to be fine. They're, they've got their fourth Porsche on the books, you know, it's all <laughs> kinds of crazy stuff that we've seen. Um, and then, and then it, it all catches up, right? I always say it's all going to catch up at some point in time. If you're not doing things right, it's going to catch up. So we, we're honest, like my, my style is very direct. It's very clear. And I don't beat around the bush. So I make, I lay it out like, Hey, your runway is six months at this rate. Your runway is three months at this rate. You got to make some changes on the flip side. We actually have some really intelligent clients that love data. You know, I mean, they just, we do some analysis. They're like, this is so awesome. This is so cool. And they start making some operational decisions. So I think you kind of have to really learn who, how to connect, right? Yeah. The person that wants to see the graphs, you got to make the graphs pretty and, and impactful. The person that yeah. loves the data, you give them the data, but the person that needs a, a real conversation, you got to yeah. just sit them down and say, listen, you're going to run out of money if you keep it yeah. up. Yeah. Is there, um, as you, as when you um, start working with a client and yeah. I like that because it always gives people a great starting point. When you're working with a client and you say you're starting a new kind of advisory relationship, what is the kind of, what's your first thing that you do? I just start asking questions. You know, I want to get to know who they are. You know, I, I do an assessment and it's really just, you know, how'd you start this business? What made you start this business? You know, where do you want to see this business? Um, so I can get an idea of how they operate. Like, I'd like to say everything that we do is super standardized and it fits everybody, but every owner is different. I mean, you know, you're, you're yeah. managing how many CEOs, like mm -hmm. everyone's different. So it, it starts with an assessment, starts with what, what do you want to see? What are your challenges? And really kind of understanding who they are before we even touch anything. Yeah. I have, have you noticed that our, um, how articulate are the owners about that? Can because I've noticed there's two different kinds of you know owners, entrepreneurs, CEOs. Yeah. One group has thought so much about their business that they're able to articulate who they are, what they do, et cetera. And so you can get a quick feeling around it. Right. The other is like they 
they understand their business, but they don't understand how they work. Right, and right. So how do you, I, I am, I'm thinking that, yes, the finances is one thing, and you know that at the back of your hand, but right. coaching them on how to, how to think and be organized is something completely different, right? It is, it is. And it, it requires a different kind of, you know, skill set. It's almost like you become their therapist, you know, they, <laughs> you should kind of get in there. And once you, once you get in there, you start asking some questions. It doesn't take much for a business owner to open up, right? Like, right. well, let me tell you. And they start just going on and on. So once you start gaining their trust and kind of understanding what they're feeling, then, then you have to find the angle, right? Then I go back to the team and say, okay, this person, he, he's black and white, you know, he doesn't want. And so we build a team, the right people around that yeah. person or this person, loves pretty color, wants the graphs, you know, this person is, loves car, you know, just kind of with identifying who's who yeah. and then building a team around that persona. Yeah. Um, when, what, uh, a lot of what I've seen when I um, talk to the entrepreneurs is um, as soon as they can get comfortable with the money yeah, and someone that can see the money, yeah. they literally like open every part of their life. Everything. And, and, and so, you know, I always say like our, my CPA is I tell them everything, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's almost my responsibility to tell them it everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the, 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 it's a strange barrier. I always talk about that, especially entrepreneurs, they need a money coach and people are right. like not telling them what to do with their money, not telling them where to put it, not telling them how to allocate it, but to just talk about it. Correct. And Correct. because I'll tell you, I don't talk to my spouse about it's not easy to do the money. I don't, no. I, I know, yeah, I, I know owners don't even talk to their business partners they, about right. stuff because, yeah. especially if you're not 50 50 business partners, you're like, ah, if I bring yeah. up this hundred thousand dollar distribution, he's only getting 20. Is he going right. to feel weird about this? Correct. How can I couch it? Yeah. Can I just send him an email about it? Like, it yeah. literally happens that way. Mm -hmm. I know. No, it's so, it's so true. I mean, likewise, like, you know, when you have to, like, when me and my husband have to talk about financial stuff, I'm like, all right, it's got a nice, good setting here, you know, <laughs> make sure there's no stressful things around. Yeah. But people, it's, it's hard to talk about, you know, whether it's personal, whether it's professional, you, and I tell it all the time, like, get somebody in your corner. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be us. Get somebody in your corner because to your point, it's the minute you start talking, they say, oh, when I have this, oh, when I have this, I want to have this. And then they, A, feel better, right? They've shared right. it with somebody. B, they've put it in someone's hands. So now mm -hmm. someone has, can take what they've just told them and, and do something proper with it, right? Yeah. Versus if you don't have it, it's just spinning around in your head. Nothing is getting done. It's just, you know, causing this happening, right? Yeah. And you need to think about bigger things. You need to think of other things than, you know, those conversations. So yeah. I always say, get some in your corner. I, I saw what you, what you, what you wrote about that. And it's, it's so true with anything, get somebody in your corner. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see if we can try some tactical stuff. I know yeah. there's a lot of business owners listening. And if I'm a business owner right now thinking about, Hey, there's a huge opportunity in this world right now where I can grow my business in the most ethical possible way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, right. How, if if you were kind of in that person's corner, coming in and yeah. advising them, yeah. what are first? I'd like to kind of talk about. I hate calling it mistakes, but just things that entrepreneurs overlook. What mm -hmm. what do you see often as either in either in their profitability or I know you talk about the leaks often. Like, what yes. do you see where uh, I'm an entrepreneur? I'm like, oh, sh what should I be thinking about and and seeing if there are any of these leaks that are off that you see often that are in my business? Right. I think the first indicator is really going to be your gross profit margin, right? So someone says, oh, I want to have a $10 million company or I want a $20 million company. And they get hung up on this top line revenue. But I tell people, it doesn't matter what that number is. If you're going into debt every month, if you can't make payroll, if your cash flow is crap, it doesn't matter what that top line number is if you don't have any money. So the first indicator it really is the gross profit, right? For every dollar that you're generating, how much are you spending, right? Are you, are you bringing 50% home, 30, 20% home? Like, what are you bringing home from that dollar? So let's, let's, let's make it more specific. Yeah. You know, the restaurant industry, you walk in there, you, you buy a meal, it, it costs $10. You know, how much did it cost to prepare that? If it costs $5 to prepare it, not bad. You got a 50% margin, but if it costs you $7, and you're only taking home three dollars off that sale you got to fix something you got to tighten right. some screws you got to call your suppliers call your vendors negotiate those deals how many people are standing around when you don't have people in the restaurants you know really kind of tightening those screws that is probably the biggest indicator of how much money you'll have left over in your business 
Yeah. And so let's talk about that for a second. So I, I will, I will wager that I talk to business owners all the time. I would wager. That's one of the first questions I ask right. is I don't even ask top line numbers. Right. Right. Uh, so I'm like, Hey, just talk about, I, I always say, Hey, what, what, what are your gross margins look like? And they, right. on, they look at me like you're in the headlights and yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you got to know just gross margins. Right. And I think it's important for us to know to, um, I, I, because I'm a, from an investor fund perspective, I always look at yeah. two numbers. It's like, what are your gross margins as right. a company? Right. And what are industry margins generally Correct. speaking, Correct. right? Yeah. So yeah. as a restaurant or I, 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 I like service businesses as a service right. business. Sure. If you're not clipping roughly 20% margins, I'm like, right. you have an opportunity there. And, and so if someone tells me they're yes. a service business and they're clipping 9% margin, I'm like, whoa, 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 there's, we can yeah. actually get to 20% right. margins right. 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 and then do more with it. Um, right. How do you, how do you get that message across to them? It, it's the same stuff, you know, it's having those direct conversations. And just like I would say to you, like if I we run the data and the numbers, first of all, it's a shock, right? So looking at it going, oh my God. And then like a lot of emotion comes to, to the table, right? Yeah. And so you, you, you take it easy when you walk them through and you say, these are some suggestions we can offer, right? Let's look at the vendors. Let's look at, you know, the suppliers. Let's look at your payroll. So like I'll use us as an example, service-based industry, right? Yeah. We've had times where we've made those mistakes, right? Yeah. The, there's people calling out, they're busy and we're over capacity. Let's, hire another person and get a buddy in here, get somebody in here. And that's not the answer all the time, right? Taking a step back, look at your operations. It really comes down to the, these finance numbers are going to paint a picture of your operations. How well are you running your company? That margin tells you if you're running your company well or not, really. Yeah. You know, so that's, it take, makes you look at everything. What can you streamline? What can you squeeze and tighten to get that margin up? Yeah. So, so uh, if for those that are listening, the first thing is you'd be answering in your head, hey, okay, do I know my gross margin here? If right. I don't, it's actually not hard to find out. You no, can, it's not. It's, right. it's dividing one number by another number on your, on your P&L statement. Right, right, right. right, right. 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 Absolutely. It's very simple. Uh, and, and so, okay, now I know my gross margins. Yes. I have no sense of what the other industry should look like uh, or what, right. what other, um, my, I'd say my peers are feeling, how do I find that? And how do I get a sense of whether I'm doing well? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, I you know, I'm, I'm big on collaboration, right? So you talk to your peers, you know, talk to, and I know a lot of strong, you know, other, other industries and that, that are part of peer groups, you know, so talk to your peers because you can, we can go and research and do all this stuff and say, historically, the restaurant industry should have a 30% gross margin, whatever have you, but you talk to your peers that are in your community that are facing the same challenges that you're facing and you'll you can get an idea of what that should be like, right? So, I mean, I think for the service-based industries, it's kind of easy, you know, you, we all have friends, there's so many services around here. You can kind of gauge, you know, I 50% would be good, you know, yeah, you're getting you're getting good to go. I take 50% in most industries. I take that all day. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so so to, to talk to them, right? I think- um, Talk to them, yeah. I, I, I don't know why. I think it's very um, beneficial to have industry peer groups. And I think- It is. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mentor a, a few businesses that are uh, regionally based. Right. And I always say, hey, if you feel uncomfortable having, if you're in the Southeast and you have, you know, a $85 million business, like I right. will find you a peer yeah. in the Northwest. Yeah. Right. Like I will right. find you a peer and they would want to talk to you and you can Correct. put an insane mastermind group together Correct. of what you're, what you're missing out on. Right. And I think people get scared because they think like, oh, it's competition. They don't want to share secrets and all this good stuff. But, but the fact of the matter is there's plenty of business, right? There's even just Orange County, LA County, you start opening up these doors and the regions, there's plenty of business out there that it's, it's not going to be that vital. You're going to get way more value out of it than, than, than you think, right? You just, and like you said earlier, it's lonely at the top. You have somebody else that's doing what you're doing, facing the same challenges you're going through every single day, and you can help each other, you know, through those yeah. apps. Yeah, um, whenever someone tells me, this is pretty funny, whenever someone tells me about, you know, uh, hey, they'll steal my secrets or we're, yeah, we're going right. to compete, I'm like, even if I gave you an, their entire client list, right. you have so much going on right, right now. Right, 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 right. <laughs> it's not that simple. You can't even finish. You can't even do, you can't even take advantage of the opportunities that you have. Correct. 
Correct. And, and, and if, if, that, if you have so much bandwidth, then right. I, I guess so. But uh, sure. so, so what would be, so you see, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the gross margin numbers. I think it's, it's yeah, I yeah, think every yeah. single person should know that because they can have right. an intelligent conversation about their business. Right. Um, what, are, what are one or two other metrics that you, that you are, that you kind of zone in on? So the payroll, so the support of payroll, not necessarily the cost of goods, but the payroll, right? What's that payroll to revenue number look like? You know, so it's it's your admin staff, it's your marketing staff, it's it's you, it's everybody that's that's underneath there. And and how much are you putting into people? And are you using them right? You know, so that's that's one big one that we do a payroll to revenue analysis uh-huh. on either the cost of goods payroll or the administrative payroll, below the line payroll. Yeah. So we compare those two things, right? Um, that's not something that people normally do, but we do it just in, just to give people an idea of, of where they're at. Uh, I, and then, I, yeah, I think that's super cool. And I, I yeah. love for you to talk more about that because now you're saying, Hey, how much, how, how much are my resources right. actually contributing to the, to my sure. business? Right, right, right. I mean, if you've got, you know, a 10 person marketing team, or if you're paying yourself 350 a year, but you know, the, then you, you know, again, can't make all the payroll and cash flow is bad and you're getting a line of credit and doing all these things, then it's not working. Right. So it has to make sense to the revenue of, yeah. what, of what you're bringing in. Right. And to be fair for everybody, if you want a healthy, profitable business. Yeah. And then I think the last thing will probably be like the variable costs, right? Those are the ones that they're, they're flowing in and out. It's, oh, let's take someone out to a nice dinner. It's just, you know, three, 500 bucks, but you're doing that over and over again. You know, you're traveling when you probably can do a Zoom call. You've got dues and memberships that have been on it for five years. You don't even know what's going. It's just recurring. Yeah. It's, it's all that kind of, you know, the, the variable stuff that you need to take a really hard look at and just start chopping away. Yeah. So, so maybe you can, maybe you can um, uh, uh, flip it and just talk about, the quick definition difference between fixed and variable. For oh, sure, just, sure, yeah. sure, sure. <laughs> I, I get all accounting in. I yeah. just like go for it. Yeah. Um, so the fixed costs, you've committed to those costs, right? You've committed to the rent. You've made, signed a contract. You've committed to the personnel. You've, you've negotiated employment contracts. You've committed to insurance. You don't really have a choice. You got to have some insurance. So the fixed costs are items that you have contractually committed to to run your business, right. you need them, right? You, you need the people, you need the insurance, you need the rent. So those are the exact, gonna be the same amount almost every single month. They're fixed, they're not going anywhere, they're not gonna fluctuate. The variable costs are the ones that are gonna go up and down, depending on, on, on activity, your mood, yeah. cash flow. <laughs> those, are, those are the things, you know, you have a good month, you're gonna celebrate with a team, you know? Those are the things that really can be controlled, the discretionary costs, right? Yeah. So those are usually first to go in the during the hard times. Yeah. But even when the good times are happening, you should look at those. You know, you really should be careful on, on that because wouldn't you rather spend money investing in the business, like like purposefully investing in the business than you know, spending it on travel or things that you may not really need? Yeah. I um I don't know what you think about this, but I did this out of necessity and um uh, it's become a standard in all our businesses across my funds, et cetera, is that we used to do this uh, just in the last five years, Christine, we were starting to do a review of just these recurring expenses on a credit card. Nice. And it seems really simple, right? Oh, but, yeah. but what I, I, it got to the point where I was like, I can't keep track of this stuff so anymore. Many. So I told all our businesses, I'm like, Hey, you get one card, and you run all your subscriptions. That's your subscriptions card. You get a second yeah. Amex and you run all your subscriptions off right. of that. Right. And during, and we were recording this around COVID sensitive time. Like that was, it's the easiest thing to do. Cause you can easier. literally look at your statement and know which right. ones you have and which ones you don't. So the, even, even, um, even on personal finance, even on our household, yeah. I yes. run all our subscriptions on yes. one card because right. that way I know, Otherwise, you're, you, it, it's in, interlaced with the, with the targets and the Amazon bills. Yeah, and you have no yeah. idea what's recurring. That, that's, a great, that's a great idea. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're accountants, so we, we yeah. run it through the books and everything. And so we run detail and we start analyzing detail. But you know, if you've got an accountant running your books, tell them to print out dues and membership. Tell them to print out software line item. Tell them yeah. to print out the line items that are subscriptions. And you'll see, I mean, uh, yeah. everything that's in those line items, right? So yeah. so, so we do that. We kind of go through, and, and I did it myself in, in January, pre-COVID. I was like, everything was fast and furious. And I had a breath and I was like, let me just look through our stuff. And I'm like, we're cutting cable. Yeah. We're cutting the clean. I just cut a few things. And yeah. honestly, it was an easy 10 grand yeah. for a year. Yeah. $10,000. I was yeah. like, what? So, yeah. And that was just my personal life. Imagine yeah. these multi-million dollar businesses 
that yeah. have, you know, softwares galore running through, subscriptions running galore running through. I mean, just for years, like yeah. five years, just like on and on and on yeah. taking money. Let's, um, let, so, so hopefully that tip helped you guys because I think that, you know, I think Christine Small, it, what seems small to us, I think from uh, right. what I've realized is that as the business grows and things get complex, uh, staying organized is, yeah. is super powerful. Right. And I, I don't think good advisors can't even make sense of stuff that when you, you're like, here's my four boxes of stuff makes sense. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, I, you, you talked about one thing when you talked about the payroll component, which I'd love yeah. to love to have your yeah. guidance on is um, even though I, I've seen a lot of owners and entrepreneurs pretty organized with payroll, pretty organized with, you know, most of the things on the PL, but they are very um, uh, the Western world when it comes to their own comp. And mm -hmm. so I'd love to talk maybe for a few minutes about owner comp for a second. Yeah, sure, sure. And I see uh, just some best practices around, do I take a base salary? Is that okay. the right thing or is not the right thing? Do I take quarterly sure. bonuses? Is that the right thing or not the right thing? And my third, if you can talk about that is, yeah. um, someone told me that when I started a business that uh, sometimes you have bad months, so I have to write a check. So I'll just write a check and then we'll just, I'll take a distribution uh, later, right? And so, yeah. so um, I, you've seen it. You know, I've both, seen it all. I've seen it you've, all. You've seen it. And, and hey, I, I've written my fair oh, share, me too. Of, yeah, sure, fair sure. share of checks into yeah. the business and be like, oh, it's my business. It'll figure it out. I'm not right. going to take a right. note. I'm going to pay AFR, all of that stuff. So um, just so maybe from maybe those three things. Number one, yeah. uh, your thoughts around owners taking owner comp and how do you think about that? How do you, how should we structure something like that? Sure, sure, sure. I, I think a base salary should always be established, right? Because whether it's your business or you sell it, someone has to steer the ship, right? Someone has to be in charge. So, you know, and, and for the most part, I see people taking some pretty fair salaries. I mean, I, I've been in some situations where they're a startup and it's like, whoa, you're making how much? Like, yeah. you know, but then, but then I think for the most part, they're, they're, it's reasonable, but you should establish a base salary. I, and, then, and then I do believe in quarterly bonuses. I've seen some really, really great owners, not only bonus them, but their core management team just on performance. Like, right? you know, I mean, some just, you know, great metrics looking at that. Um, and then I see the people that just like draw and draw and mm -hmm. then they're hit with this massive tax bill yeah. at the end of the year, sorry, massive tax bill at the end of the year. And, and then they're, they're like, where am I going to come up with $50,000? Mm -hmm. well, like, well, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So I, I do think the base salary is key. The bonuses are, are important too. But if you take all those suggestions and you also go with your own metric, you're looking at every single month. So, you know, so there's, there's your base salary, but they're also drawing sometimes, right? Like, oh, just it's an owner expense. Oh, yeah. it's just run it through. So you don't realize maybe you're taking a salary, but you also have a component here. Yeah. So your your two fifty or three hundred is more like four, maybe. You know, so it's and then you go, you don't realize that you're taking that much out of the business. So putting your eyes on it, getting those metrics, they can be simple. They don't have to be fancy, right? Yeah. Getting your accountant to put you five metrics you look at every single month, super simple, but look at your number. What are you, what are you spending out of the business? And I think that's important. I think you nailed, um, so the two things that you, uh, that, that you said really hit home. The first one for me was, hey, you should take or budget for a base salary because right. whether you run the business you, you need an operator. So someone's going to have to run the business. Someone has to run it. Someone has to so run it. So what is fair comp for that person? And right. let's establish that. Even if it's below market, let's establish a starting point for that. Right. Right. And, 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 and I think that's a, that's a really good starting point because now right. you can say, hey, I, I, my business is budgeted for this. Even if I, Sharon, step away, Correct. Jimmy can come and run it. And the, there's comp built in for Jimmy to, to run a Correct. business like that, right? right. Which, is, which is really cool. The second thing which you said, I, I wish... Uh, if, you, if you're listening, please listen to this. Having uh, built and sold multiple businesses, there is a, it's a significant pain point because we have to, especially with, um, with a strategic buying you, you have to show uh, that X amount of quote, like you said, is owner distribution or owner comp is sure. below the line, right? It's like, right. hey, it's car, it's travel, right. it's Amex bills, it's things like that, which is totally cool, by the way. Like right. if you and your accountant figure out that's the right, right. thing to do, that's cool. Right. Um, I And I know our accountant basically told us, hey, 
anything that you think is this is is an owner benefit, if you will. Right. Let's right. just tag it. Tag it. Just tag, tag it, it. And, yeah. and, and and you don't have to like showcase it and just tag yes. it because yes. I remember Christine when we were going through diligence on on a sale that you know you you know about, mm -hmm. um, like we just hit a button, it just tagged all was, owner benefits, yeah. right? And we said, hey, all of this gets it's an ad back into EBITDA. Correct, very and fast. So, yeah, and very so suddenly fast. you're like, hey, we added back a million dollars into EBITDA. Correct. You get an you get an eight to fourteen x on that. Suddenly you're right. like, I just made right. fourteen million more on this deal that I would have never made otherwise. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a fast ad back. So the, you know, if you're, you're in diligence, you're going to be selling your company, right? First thing is your salary is going to be acknowledged, right? right. The, the, it's going to be acknowledged. It still might be needed, but all those ad backs, they add up. I mean, yeah. especially the, the, the spenders, the, you know, yeah. like people with all the cars on the books, all this, you know, all that comes off the table. All of a sudden you're like, Oh, this company actually can make some money. Yeah. 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 And I also think that it, uh, the other big uh, part of tagging it is as we invest in businesses, my, as an owner, you should know that you have leverage when it comes to that, because you can say, Hey, uh, I'll stay for six more months or 12 more months in the process. But as part of this deal, I am, I'm looking to continue with this owner benefit. If you don't right. maintain that, they can literally right. say, we had a deal with you. The deal was a hundred thousand in calm for six months. Sure. wipe out everything else and said i've sure. actually seen owners suddenly be like wait now i got stuck right. with this consulting fee and right. i have nothing left right 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 no it's very true because and that comes to awareness right you're not right. if they're not even aware how how well they're living off their company then yeah. in that sale they might be in a worse off situation right because yeah. they won't get that full full chunk that they were used to getting, you know, they're going to get a, a buyout and in their head they're thinking, well, that seems fair. I was, I was making, you know, 250 a year, but you weren't, you were taking home like 350 yeah. because of everything that was coming through the business. Right. So um, he, here's the uh, tactical question for you. And I've seen a lot of owners talk to me about this. And so they'll say, Hey, Christine, in, you know, if I had to get an operator, I'm starting the business from the bottom up. I've been in it for a year. I'm taking no comp. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that an operator comp would be somewhere in the pick a number, make it easy math, right? 120 range, which is 10, 10 K a month. If that is sure. the case, just go with easy numbers. Okay. But, and let's say I sure I'm running the business and I'm not taking any comp for now. Okay. What I've noticed a lot of owners would do is they say, well, when I'm ready to take comp, I'll take three K a month and I'll book it as three K a month. And, right. or, um, do you have any suggestions around saying, Hey, this should be, 10K a month in comp, deferred. How do they track that? Because at some point, I've actually seen owners get resentful. Like we actually invested in a company recently and the owner's like, well, I haven't taken any comp for three years. And I'm like, okay, we'll pay you anything deferred on the books. He's right. like, what do you mean? And I'm like, you have nothing deferred on the books. It means I owe you nothing. I don't like that. I'm not taking comp. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of owners do it and they, they do it out of, out of the goodness of, of, they want their baby to succeed totally. and they want to make sure they want to sacrifice. And I get it. I've, I've been there. Right. But at the same time, I, I don't like it. I'm like, well, why, why aren't you taking comp? Like, yeah. why, why can't you even take a little bit? You know, I mean, so that is just a rhythm. I, I think it's, it's fair for the business and the business health to be able to, to pay the owner as well. Yeah. But, but to your point, I mean, that's a, that's a, decision and a commitment they have to make and you know a lot of times it's so fast and furious in the beginning you know they're just they're just trying to get this baby off the ground and they're just trying to you know make payroll but i i do think it's like with anything it's like with savings right it, yeah. it's, it's not that hard you know it's not that hard to save a little bit it's not that hard to pay yourself a little bit um, rather than whenever money is in there, you just take it and then you got the tax issue now you've got the yeah. liabilities that you haven't you know planned for you've got the cash flow issue so we're I think it's really important just to be, um, just to plan it accordingly, right? To just yeah. slow it down, plan it accordingly. Even if it's small, just get it in a rhythm. Just get something going. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're spot on because um, one of the things I, I struggle a lot with, Christine, is when I talk to entrepreneurs, I can see it in their eyes. They have yeah. kind of heart and soul in their business. Right. And when you, you know, when you say, hey, your business is, I'll write you a check for this, an amount for your business, you almost, they, they get resentful. Yeah. And I think that like being tired and resentful is an entrepreneur's worst nightmare yeah. because they're like, Hey, I should have been taking X amount of comp. If I was taking right. that, I would feel better. Heck, right. I, I'll tell you, I'll be super honest with you. Yeah. I've been in that position where oh, yeah. I, have, I have taken no comp right. and then 
I can deal with it for a while. And, right. and I feel the goodness of my heart. I'm like, you know, hey, here's right. me being a martyr right. or whatever. Right. And, but nothing, like nothing. And you're like, at some point you're like, hey, listen, you know, you just get super resentful and you actually start making, uh, you know, unsound decisions because right. you're like, my you're emotional. Yeah, you're getting emotional about yeah. this. So, yeah. Uh, one, I'd say as, you, as you're like, at least account for it because I right. think that uh, sure. you can always wipe sure. it out. And number sure. two, you, there's got to be some record of the work that you did. There does. Well, and it's the founder's fatigue, right? You're, you're just, you're, you're, there's times where you're just a beat down, you know, you're, you're tired, you're, you're trying to make this thing go. And, and, but I think, you know, having that little bit of compensation, even a little bit is a little bit of a, you, you earn something, right? You're, yeah. you're taking something, you have a little bit of reward. I don't care if it's a thousand dollars and it's a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. You're, it's, it's something, but it, that fatigue wears on you, the resentment that you're talking about, the emotion. Yeah. Now, to your point, you know, you're not making sound decisions on liabilities, big changes, you know, when you're like, I've, I've been grinding for five years, yeah. I've built five locations and five, you know, I mean, when you're so exhausted and burnt out, like you're not making any decisions well, right? Yeah. yeah. So it comes, it's come, it's like you equate it to like your own health. Like how well are you maintaining uh, your own health? That's good. You know? yeah. So, so we, we do this a lot where it's like, you know, let's get a checkup. Let's get a real checkup. You know, how, how healthy are you? How healthy yeah. is your business? So a lot of disciplines of maintaining your health come straight into your business, right? Yeah. Doing things consistently, you know, not being impulsive, you know, making the right decisions, yeah. having the right habits, all that good stuff comes right in line. So if you're just even paying yourself a little bit as you go, I think it eases that resentment a little bit. Yeah. And, and this is, I mean, when we go, we go back to talking earlier about this, the, the kind of money coach idea, right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't think the average entrepreneur will, will tell you how much they're taking, how much they're making, et cetera. Right. And right. I think that like, it's pretty quickly I can figure out sure. from people, you know, that like I have, I have a client who's an amazing, uh, amazing business owner, you know, not in the U S and um, he says, well, you know, this is, I've spent this, these last two years uh, as building years, as investment years. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, now that, we've had some setbacks in the world, it feels like this is going to be another investment year. I was like, Hey, think about it a little differently. Right. Sure. Um, I, I, say, I always say like, instead of thinking about this as a year of investment, just say, right. Hey, this was a season of right. this. This was a season of sowing. And so the next season is going to be a season of harvesting. Right. So when I get a chance, I'm not going to instantly go and reinvest those dollars. Right. Because if you for 18 months, keep reinvesting, like that is the only thing, you know, Right, right. That's, that's you don't know true. any other way. You don't know any other way. Right. And, and, and that's what I've seen a lot of founders do is like, hey, I'm just gonna make the money and put it right back. Make the money and put it. Yeah. It'll get better. I'll, I'll get the, you know, I'll get the pot of gold yeah. at the end. But you get super resentful and a resentful entrepreneur is a not fun entrepreneur to be around. No, it's, it's, it's so true. And I know I can relate to that in so many ways, you know, it's because you're just you're like, it's okay. It's okay. You know, I, I don't need anything. But that emotion then bleeds into your marriage. And yeah. leads into your home life and bleeds into everything because you're not fulfilled or super happy in what you're doing. So I think it's, it's again, it's back to the health of your business. Like how healthy is it? And, 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 you know, for that example, if you're spending two years investing and now we're going through this, this situation here that with, with COVID and, and everything that's happening, um, some, of, some of the smartest ones have not even always only been able to stabilize, but really pivot, like really yeah. adapt and, and, and figure out a new business model or figure out a new angle and, and still thrive. So I, I think people kind of threw in the towel, like it's going to be shitty. Like I yeah. forget it. It's, yeah. I just, you know, we'll figure it out next year, yeah. but no, like, you know, there's, we're still here. We're still alive. We're still, there's things moving and grooving. There's still things you can do, you know? Yeah. Let, talk, talk about just mechanically. Um, I know a lot of business owners and I actually don't know any business owner who doesn't do this. I know a lot of business owners who, um, who invest back in the business. They write a yeah. check back into the business. They sure. contribute back into the business and they say, Hey, I'm going to reinvest personal profits, personal capital into this business. Sure. Uh, mechanically, how do you, and I'd say Christine, most of the time there's like yeah. no record keeping of it. <laughs> like whatsoever. I actually have, I know of big businesses, meaning yeah. that have actually gotten, they have zero idea where where early capital came from, especially like ongoing owner contributions, right? Right. 
And so um, just can you talk briefly about, hey, I'm an owner. I'm kind of writing checks into the business for, for maybe for good reason. Sure. How do you suggest either documenting that, getting paid interest on that? How do you yeah. suggest kind of like the, the, just the, how do you paper that process? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's just a, a loan document, right? You find it at corporate attorney and you just, it's a loan to shareholder. It's on the books. It's going to be on there as, and then you put it, you know, very, very simple. I, we have a few of them on some of our clients, loan to shareholder documents. They, they can go up pretty high actually, um, or, or loan from shareholders. Sorry. And then you just drop in an interest rate. You account for it properly. Um, but that's what it comes down to just accounting for it properly. Get it on the books, you know, don't let it fluster and, or, or, or get into equity or something. Put it there as a loan so that you can say it's going to be paid back with interest. Yeah. Um, but to your point earlier about some of these big, I've seen some big companies too that don't have like accounting and I'm just like, what, what, I mean, what do you mean you don't know? Like, yeah. you know, so it's, it's fascinating because like I said earlier, get somebody, get, get a bookkeeper for you know, 30 bucks an hour, get, get somebody in there, you know, and look at your stuff, have them tell you, have them give you a report every month, have them give you your P&L and balance sheet every month, have them show it to you and tell you how much you made this month. I mean, it's, it's these small things, but it's going to shift how you think it's going to shift how you make your decisions. Yeah. The, um, uh, I think it's, I think it's super important, uh, especially because when, what one piece of advice that I, I got, and I, I don't know if you you prescribe this or not, is yeah. uh, I remember one one of our businesses where we were writing checks constantly. Essentially, yeah. it was a you we had ten thousand dollars in payroll. Like we yeah. I would get a ten thousand dollar check after taxes, so it's called it seven thousand. And yeah. literally, I would tell them keep the seven grand. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. So end of the year, so I would have a seven grand monthly loan right. to the company. And right. the interesting part was um, our our CPAs at that point were like, hey, Sharon you should get paid interest. Yeah. So at least have yes. the interest check starting to right. come, if Correct. not anything else. Otherwise, Absolutely. Uh, we don't know if this is a loan. We don't know what this is. Absolutely. Absolutely. That will, that will you know, change it from you know, an investment, an equity investment versus a loan, right? So right. again, it, it's so simple, right? You just, it's, it's one or the other and you right. got to put it where it belongs, but that interest will kick in and the interest is legitimate. You know, that's, right. that's money that you, you're you know, lending, if you will. Right. And I think the small mechanical things like that are, are super important to see. Right. Um, here's another question for you. Um, taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all talk about taxes. So, right. So uh, for, for whatever doesn't run, I, I, very few things that owners do runs through payroll. Like it's, it's very few. Right. Things, right? Sure. 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 And so un, unless it's their base comp or whatever, but what these distributions, they're rich sometimes and they're like, yes. Oh my gosh, I had a big month. Yeah. Uh, I got this big distribution, which is yeah. cool. I appreciate that. Fine, yeah. Um, how do you like, how do you kind of advise your clients on, Hey, is it a, I'm going to write you a hundred thousand dollar check as a distribution for this month. Like, put the 30 can grand away right now. Yeah. Gonna, how do right. you kind of have that conversation? I have those conversations very quickly, like very, very quickly. If, it, if it's, if it's if something like, Oh, I'm going to take the distribution or, you know, I'm like tax liability. Okay. Let's start planning for that. So like, it's always at the forefront, right? So our, our, our job is to prepare, right? We're not having a big surprises. Nobody loves a surprise on yeah. in the finance side, unless it's like a good one, but typically it's like a tax liability and it's really big. So we, we immediately say, this is what you should expect. It's going to be 30%. So we, we make that very clear often and then put it away or take the 70, leave the 30. Yeah. Um, and then usually around Q3 is when the big planning takes place, right? We kind of let, we kind of take it easy a little bit, you know, beginning of the year, <laughs> springtime, everyone's happy, but Q3, we start, you know, we, we, everyone's got a CPA. We typically have relationships with their CPAs or we'll bring right. one in for them. And then we start doing Q3 financial. By Q3, you'll know where you're at. And then a, a lot of them, you know, will have to spend some money to get that liability down, right? So a lot of them are profitable. They're looking like, you know, year after year, we've been profitable. Okay, what do you need? You need computers? Do you yeah. need infrastructure? Do you need softwares? And then, then those, those purchases become strategic, right? Right. It becomes a true investment into the company because you know you're headed into a profitable year, you know, you head into a tax liability, but those conversations should be happen at least once a quarter. But Q3 is when we kind of go hard on everybody. Yeah. Um, I, I love for you to talk briefly about 
uh, reporting. And yeah. uh, it, it's shocking to me how uh, there is not owners, entrepreneurs, uh, from a fund level for us, it's very, I, I run same reporting across all businesses because okay. I, I, that's the only way I can see sure. the top level numbers. Sure. Um, and the funny part is, uh, even while I was an operator, I, yeah. I, I would look at a business and there are times when my, our monthly reporting was off and I'd look at a number and be like, that number's wrong. Right. And, and my team will get upset. They're like, what do you mean, Sharon, that number's wrong? I'm like, yeah. I can tell you that ratio is totally right. off. There is no right. way that number is correct. Right. Right. And then they'll say, fine, I'll run it again. And they'll run it again. They're like, oh yeah, you're right. I was missing a zero. And I'm like, I know, right. I know the ratios that well. And I don't think you ever know them unless you look at reporting, unless you look at the same report or something it's similar the only way. often, right? It's the only way, you know, and we, we love reports, obviously, right? So we, <laughs> we love reports, we love, you know, we love dashboards, KPIs, you know, and graphs, you name it, well, we're going to create it, whatever, whatever your style is, we're going to make yeah. it, but we love reports, but it really is only in that exercise, you can catch it. You, because otherwise you're just cranking out numbers, categorizing numbers, but when you create the reports and especially if they're like, you know, five, six tabs and, by location, you know, they're gonna, if they're not tying out, you're gonna wait, wait a minute, why is that location, you know, that's how you catch the differences. That's how you catch yeah. the ratios. And so that's why I'm, I, I just recommend just even the basic reports, right? Yeah. So let's say you're just getting the PL, right? And this month it's this, and next month it's that, and you'll be able to, say, hey, that's not what it said last month, you know? Yeah. Just the basic reporting is, is key. But yeah, we, we, we crank those babies out because, you know, we A, we like to talk numbers, but B, if it's in your hands and it's in front of you, you know, then the owner has to stop for a second and look at these numbers, right? And yeah. really kind of digest what's happening in their business. You know, it's, uh, you're, you're so spot on because um, we have a lot of owners when I call it, they're like player coaches, right? We just totally yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. They, they go sell, they go, sure. they're rainmakers, et cetera. Right. And I always tell them, I'm like, hey, listen, you know how to do your job. You don't know how to run your business. Mm -hmm. And and which is, they're like, well, what do you mean? Isn't it the same thing? I'm like, no, it's not. You know, how to do your job is your day-to-day. -day, you're selling, you understand your product, you understand right. your team. Like, that's your job. Right. But your business is is like what I see is your reporting. Like right. if your reporting is, if you don't know how to read that, I'm just going to assume that you don't know how to run your business. Right. And just because you know how to do your job doesn't mean you know how to run your business. And right. Like the average entrepreneur gets really like big it really personally. When They're very sensitive. That. They're all, it's very sensitive stuff for them. You know, it's, it's true. It's, it's funny. We, we, earlier on, you know, I would, I would develop these reports for people and I'm like, oh, we can do this and we can create a report for you. And it's going to have these graphs and all this stuff. And then they're like, oh, okay, okay. And then they get like, so when's those reports? Yeah. You know, then they get, they get accustomed, they get spoiled and then yeah. it becomes a thing. For, and it's important, right? It's important for them to see that. But some people don't even know what they don't have. You know, they yeah. don't even know that they have this story on paper that's going to tell them like how well you're running your business right now. Yeah, I am. Um, I remember. I'll give you a fun story, and then I, I, I ask you one last question. My, I have my fun story. My first board meeting ever. I never actually had a. I never had a real board. I had raised yeah. money. I yeah. was. 21 right yeah. so i literally had i'd raised venture money i had no i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know anything like, right right right, right. Know anything. uh so i i called my chairman on my board just so he's a very well-known guy in the in the, right. in, the, in the industry and i said hey joe so i know our board meeting's coming up how would you like me to like what would you like me to prepare for right. our board right. and christine he said like the most amazing thing i think i got an mba in when i was 21 and he said yeah. sharon don't prepare anything for the board and I was like, what, wait, what? He goes, no, no, don't prepare anything for the board. Just bring the dashboard that you already use. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I was like, okay, sounds good, Joe. And, and then I, I go back, I'm like, holy crap. I'm totally running this business on pure gut and right. feel. Right. And he called me out so fast, yeah. right? Yes. And he was like, hey, I can help entrepreneurs because I know that – their internal dashboards are all wrong because right. they're they're not they're not looking at the right stuff. Right, right. And if what they do for board meeting is they dress up stuff and they show us stuff, and then when right. they come back, they they don't. If I actually saw really what they were working with, I could actually yeah. help them more. Right, 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 right. And that was the first dashboard that I I, I was like, okay, well, what do I use to run? I built a dashboard right. live, and then I used that. I was like, okay, if this is the case, and I only have to show my existing dashboard to my board members, right. and I should just build the right one to use. And Correct. that was my first uh, kind of you know. Yeah. 
uh, and less it's not that hard you know it really isn't but the thing is you know everyone runs on gut right for for a long time then they're pretty in tune i will have to say some of the owners are pretty in tune they're they know what the top line is they kind of have an idea of what what the cash is going on they, <laughs> they know what the margins are they they're but then it gets to a point where they're just a little too big right yeah. it, it happens pretty fast they start growing now that their problems that they're managing are bigger and you can't just go on on gut or think you have the finger on the pulse just in your head right so you right. need those dashboards you need those metrics uh some of the best ones look at them weekly you know yeah. i mean every week they've got a dashboard coming their way on you know calls and you know job and openings and closings and everything that's coming through cash received collections collections is a big one you know yeah. especially in tough times that collections number how well how well you bring that money and how fast is it coming in yeah so yeah. all those metrics that are key to your industry should be on one page yeah um so uh just to give everybody while we wrap up a, a sense of how you work with clients and you, you've yeah. always talked to me about it. you're like hey there's uh, generally there's like three big kind of buckets about things you right. think about hey what's profitability Hope, hopefully we're right. running a business not right. a charity so there's profitability yeah. right, 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 right right and then there's like hey there's growth how do you actually grow with, right with a sense of this stuff and then there's processes right so uh, i'd love any uh, high level just to, to get a sense of you know I don't think the average entrepreneur knows that there are amazing, you know, advisors like you, resources like you that can help them sure. with their business. So sure. what would be a couple of things that you're working on or you've done for a client that's really helped them to give someone listening and say a chance saying, Oh my gosh, like that would be really helpful for me. Right. So we actually just launched um, what we call the profitability program, brand new program. It's just, yeah. it's brand new. And it kind of was born out of just, what's been happening lately, um, even pre COVID, but it kind of flew right in. I was like, oh, I was like meant to be because, you know, if you don't look at those numbers, you know, you're not gonna know if you're profitable. So our program that just launched, it's we take 12 months of data, we analyze everything that we just talked about, right? Revenue, payroll, cost of goods, margins, and then we present it to you in a proper format and you take home some dashboards with you. You're gonna you walk away with some yeah. templates. So that program that we just built is designed, it's a one-time snapshot no long-term contract, nothing. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, you want to, want to get a checkup? We're going to give you a solid wow, that's good. checkup on where you're at right now. And then we're going to propose adjustments that will have a long-term effect on your future. Yeah. So that program just launched. We're super excited about it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's great for everybody, right. To do a checkup. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, we, you know, our long-term clients really are imagine like an outsourced mini CFO accounting team coming in and we're there day to day, you know, we're, we're a partner with you. We're anything accounting or finance related. You push our way. We handle that for you. So, you know, that our, our, those are our two models, but you touched on a few things also that's important is process and growth, right? Yeah. So process is key to everything. You know, we, once we're working with anybody, I'll say, talk, talk me how you bring in a client through your whole system. Yeah externally and internally you know what does those two processes look like and where can we automate and how can we make it faster and then if they say you all want to do this and we want to grow to x y and z and i said okay well let's put a forecast together for you yeah so you know we have a, a number of different items that we bring to the table and it's just it's so customized right everyone's yeah. so different everyone has different visions um so we bring all these different things to the table depending on what they want you know the next year or so yeah, I, I think uh, when you when you were saying that about um, the kind of the profitability analysis, it made me think about when you talked about health, it's like the yeah. financial blood work, right? You're just doing a little blood work. Right. Being like, hey, I'll tell you exactly what yeah. I see right now. Right. And I did it on, our, on ourselves. I'll talk about like our experience. And I realized, hey, we had some pretty crappy months, you know, mm -hmm. you know, when we were when we we're like bringing on staff too fast and you're spending time training, they're not making dollars on that training time. Right. You know, you kind of take a step back and go, Oh, he made some mistakes back there. <laughs> but I never would have noticed if I didn't stop and look. Right. 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 So it's, it's really is like a, a checkup. And then we changed everything, how we were doing. Yeah. Um, so for those that are listening, Hey, if you, if you want a little financial blood work, uh, yes. talk to Christine, what, uh, what, what's the best place to find you? How can people kind of get more of what you do and how, how they can kind of engage with you? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can go to our website. It's myfinancialhaven.com. Um, you can, I, you know, yeah. our phone number, we, all the good yeah. stuff. 
yeah we'll it's link we'll link all of that up in the in the show notes and yeah. uh, i'm a big so, fan of i'm a big fan of christine's we got a chance to work together and she's uh yeah. she's a total badass so i appreciate uh, it don't yeah. don't judge our ig it's brand new it's a baby so it's, <laughs> hey <laughs> listen we, we I, I don't need you to take care of my instagram i just need to take care that's of all right, my, that's I, right. everything else in my life that's so, right that's right um uh, for those of you who want to know more just check the show notes and uh, you can get uh, connect with christine and if she asks you where you heard about us you just say hey i heard your awesome podcast with Sharon, and then that's right you know, that's right. You'll, you'll take it so proud Christine, of you. You're doing, yeah. you're doing awesome stuff, Sharon. I'm so awesome seeing what you're doing. Oh no, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being on. Thank this you. Is, this has been. This is. This is so fun to talk. I could talk Super about fun. this stuff for uh, forever. So I, I hope. Know. Awesome. Uh, thank you for doing this. Thank you so much.